Good morning friends, welcome back to Panika Tutorials. In this video, I want to discuss types of process such as independent process and cooperative process. Then I will discuss what is the need for a process synchronization. All these concepts I will discuss in detail for you. So I request everyone to watch the complete video for better understanding. First let me discuss what is an independent process. Execution of one process does not affect the execution of other process. Such kind of process we will call them as independent process. When it comes to the cooperative process, execution of one process affects the execution of other process. Let's take that process P1 is there, process P2 is there. Let's take that between the process P1 and P2, there is a some shared variable is there. Am I right? Now, while you are executing the process P1, there may be an effect on the process P2. Now, what are the things they can share? They can share a variable. Okay. They can share a code. Is it clear? Okay. And they can even share the resources. Whenever the two processes are sharing the resources or sharing the variable, any variable in the code or sharing a part of the code, then whatever the execution you are doing on the process P1, there may be an effect on process P2. Now, remember one thing. If process P1 is executing serially, let's take that process P1 is executing, then process P2, then there may be no problem at all. Is it clear? Now, let's take that process P1 and process P2 are executing in non-serial way or they are executing in concurrent way. Even in the DBMS, we have discussed about the transaction management. Am I right or wrong? Now, when two transactions are executing in a serial way, then there will be no problem. Like... Uh, what you call dirty read problem and then you will have lost update problem all these problems you will not face whenever you are executing the two transactions in serially but when you are executing a transaction two transactions in concurrent way then you will face several issues am i right or wrong now meaning is that you are executing some part of the process p1 Am I right? Then there is a preemption is there. Then you are executing process P2. Like that if you are doing them in concurrent way, then you will face some real issues. Is it clear? One of the issue is that consistency, data consistency you will lose. Am I right or wrong? So to provide the data consistency, you need to have a process synchronization. Is it clear? Are you able to understand? So I hope you have understood what is an independent process and what is a cooperative process. Now let me discuss the need for the process synchronization in detail with an example. Let's take that you have two processes such as process P1 and process P2. Is it clear? Process P1 will have the code session. Inside the code, let's take that you have count plus plus. You have a count variable okay count plus plus is there and in this one you have count minus minus and you have several instructions are there one of this instruction is count plus plus and another instruction is count minus minus now count is a shared variable let's take that count is a shared variable and count value is having count variable is having the value called five is it clear let's take that count is a shared variable okay and it's have the value five and you have count plus plus and you have count minus minus now let me convert this count plus plus into an assembly code okay what the p1 will consist of p1 will consist of for count plus plus you have to move the count variable to some general purpose register let's take it i'm moving to the r naught then i have the inc r naught is it clear means i am incrementing the r naught value then i am moving back the whatever the value is there in the r naught register to the count variable so this is the assembly code for the count plus plus session now similarly process p2 is there in that one you have count minus minus now what you have to do here move count comma r naught one let's take that you are using another general purpose register r1 and then you are writing decrement am i right because you want to decrement so decrement r1 then move r1 comma count so these are the assembly code for the process p1 and process p2 is it clear i hope you got the point and you have the common variable called count and you have initialized to 5 now let's take that let me number them 
1, 2, 3. This is also 1, 2, 3. Now let's take that. If you execute them in serial way, what will happen? You have, let's take that you have executed P1. Then you have executed P2. Let's take that you have executed instruction 1, instruction 2, instruction 3 of P1. Then you are executing instruction 1, 2, 3 of process P2. Then what will be the final result in the count? Let's check it. Count, move count comma R0. So you will have R0 is equal to 5. Then you are incrementing the R0 value. So R0 will become 6. And then you are moving back the R0 value to the count. So count will have the value 6. Are you able to understand it or not? Then you are executing the process P2, instruction 1, instruction 2, instruction 3. Now instruction 1, what is saying? Count, whatever the value is there in the variable count, you are moving to the general purpose register called R1. Now R1 will have the value called 6. Now you are decrementing R1. So R1 value will be updated to 5. Then you are moving back the whatever the value which is there in R1 to the count variable. So R1 is having the value 5. So now count will be having the value 5. So if you are executing process P1 and then process P2, the count final value will be 5. Is it clear? Similarly, if you execute the process P2, all the instructions 1, 2, 3 and then if you execute the process P1, instruction 1, 2, 3, then also you will have the count value as 5. If you have a doubt, you can verify it. Let's take that instruction 1 of the process P2. Move count to comma R1. What is the value is there in the count? 5. Okay, that you are moving to the R1. Now R decrement R1. So R1 value will become 4. Is it clear? That you are moving back to the count. So count will have the value 4. Then you are executing the instruction 1 of the process P1. What it is doing? Count comma R0. So whatever the value is there in the count variable, you are moving it to the general purpose register called R0. So R0 is equal to 4. Increment R0. So R0 value will become 5. Is it clear? Then move R1 comma count. So whatever the value which is there in the R0 register, you are moving back to the count. So finally count is equal to 5. Now let's take that. If I execute the same thing in non-concurrent way, meaning is that concurrent, sorry, in a non-serial way. Is it clear? So what I am doing is that, let's take that, I am executing two instructions of process P1. Okay, then preemption has happened. Is it clear? Then process P2 is executing instruction 1 and instruction 2. Then process P1 is executing its, or let's take that P2 is doing 1, 2, 3. Then process P1 is doing its third instruction. Now, if it is look at here, P1 has executed. First instruction and second instruction, then there is a preemption. Process P2 has done one, two, three instructions. Then process P1 is again executing the third instruction. In that case, what will be the value will be there in the count variable we will discuss now. Is it clear? Now initially count is equal to 5. Now look at here, move count comma R0. So R0 will have the value 5. Then increment R0. So now R0 will be updated to 6. Okay. After executing the second instruction, there is a preemption. Is it clear? Then the process P1, which is currently running, will go to the ready state and process P2 will come to the running state. Is it clear? Now move count comma R1. What is the value is there in the count is equal to 5. So R1 is having the value 5. Then you are decrementing the R1. Is it clear? So, R1 value will become 4. Then move R1 comma count. Okay. Move R1 comma count. So, count value will become 4 now. Is it clear? So, after executing third instruction of the process P2, count value will become 4. Are you able to understand? Then you have written third instruction of process P1. Move R0 comma count. So what is the value is there in the R0 register 6 that value you are moving to the count. So now 
count is having the value 6. So, if you execute the instructions in this order, first instruction, second instruction of process P1, three instructions of process P2, then if I execute the third instruction of process P1, then you are getting the count value is 6. Is it clear? Now, let me discuss another sequence, okay, for you. Let's take that you have executed process P2, instruction 1 and instruction 2, okay. Then you have executed process P1, instruction 1 and instruction 2. Then you have executed process P1, instruction 3, okay, or let me take it, process P2, instruction 3, then process P1, instruction 3. Is it clear? Are you able to understand? This is another sequence. So, process P2 is completing 1 and 2 instruction. Then there is a preemption. Then process P1 is completing instruction 1 and instruction 2. Again, there is a preemption. Then process P2 is coming. Then process P1 is coming. In that case, what will be the count value? Initially, the count value is 5. Am I right? Because it is a shared variable. We have declared it is equal to 5. Now, P2. Two instructions you need to execute. Co move count comma R1. So R1 value will be 5. I hope it is visible for you. Decrement R1. So R1 value will be updated to 4. Then there is a preemption. Now process P1 is executing instruction 1. Move count comma R0. What is the count value is there? 5. So that you are moving to the R0 register which is having the value 5 then you are incrementing the R0. So, R0 will be updated to 6. There is a preemption. Okay. Now, process P2 will complete the third instruction. What is the third instruction? Move R1 comma count. What is the value is there in the R1? 4. That will be shifted to the count. Okay. Are you able to understand? Shifted means it is moved to the value. Means you are storing. Are you able to whatever the value which is there in the R1 you are storing in a variable called count. Is it clear? Now look at here. Process P1 is executing its third instruction. Move R0 comma count. What is the value is there in the R0 6? So finally that will be updated to 6. Are you able to understand it or not? Let me discuss another sequence. Am I right? What is that sequence? Let's take that I am completing process P1 third instruction then process P2 third instruction. In that case, what will be the count value? Is it clear? Are you able to understand? So, I am doing the first two instructions of process P2. So, R1 value will become 4 because count value is initially 5. Okay, you are storing in 5 in the R1. Then you are decrementing R1. So, R1 value is equal to 4. Then P1 first two instructions if you execute, then R0 value will be 6. Then you are executing P1 third instruction R0 count. So, what is the value is there in the count? It will become 6 because whatever the value is there in the R0 that will be updated to the count. So, count is equal to 6. Then you are executing third instruction of process P2. Now, what it is doing? Move R1 comma count. So, whatever the value is there in the R1, you are moving to the count. So, now count is getting the value called 4. Look at here, when you are executing them in the serial order, you are getting the correct output. But when you are executing them in a non-serial order, sometimes you may get the wrong output. Am I right? Finally, the count value should be 5, but here you are getting the count value 6 and here you are getting the count value is equal to 4. But sometimes you may get the count value as 5 also. So, there is a data inconsistency. So, that's why we need the synchronization between the two process if they are cooperative process. If they are independent process, no problem. But if they are cooperative process, when they are sharing something, either it is a code or a resources, you need the synchronization between them. I hope you have understood what is the independent process, what is the cooperative process, what is the need for process synchronization. In the next video, and one more thing I forgot to tell you, as the output depends, look at here, count value, final one is depending on the 
way you are executing this instructions look at here when you are executing the instructions p1 and then p2 you got the count value as 5 when you are executing the instructions like this 1 2 1 2 3 3 you are getting some output so this situation we will call it as a race condition if the final output depends on the way you are executing the order of seek instructions execution is depends on the final output that scenario we will call it as race condition and whatever the code or the variable the two process are sharing that part we will call it as critical session in the next video i will discuss what is a critical section what is the race condition in detail for you thank you for watching the complete video have a nice day